All right, are you guys paying attention? Uh, we're going to show you the things you need to make your coffee can light. It's really important. Pay attention to this part, because this is what you have to buy. Yeah, and it's not like it's on your handout or anything. <laughs> it is on the first you, page of your handout. You, Please read it. No, nope, you need to watch <laughs> this video. And there's parts that we provide you and parts you have to buy, but we're going to show you all of them right now. First, the things you need to buy. The coffee. coffee can. Get a metal one. If Absolutely you're, if you're, metal. If you're not sure if it's metal, hit yourself in the head with it. <laughs> what kind of noise does it make? A metallic one or a cardboard or plastic sounding one? If you're unsure what the sound of metal striking your head is, get a hammer. Try <laughs> that. It should sound about the same. Don't be mistaken by a silver colored cardboard one. Make sure it is <laughs> aluminum. You can rip off a piece in the grocery store because that's what I did. You're in college now. Metal. Metal. You want to make sure it's the right size on the sheet or bigger. Don't go smaller. And take the coffee out of it before you come into class. Okay? We will not provide Ziplocs for you. Keep it at home. You'll need a piece of cardboard for your insulation. I like to use the cardboard that comes with the box that your ceramic base comes in. We'll cover that later. This we've noted as cereal box or card stock, but you can use that box from the lamp. Next, high heat barbecue, what is this, Black spray paint, paint. <laughs> good. Make sure it has a picture of a barbecue on it. It cannot be anything besides high heat, very important. Two feet of cable. It's called SJO. Make sure you ask the people at Home Depot to cut a piece off for you. 12-3, 12, 12 gauge. Don't let them talk you into any of that cheap stuff. Next, this is your cable strain relief. I do it strain relief. It has a few other names. So look at this picture. There's a picture in your handout and look at the video. And what size is this? Three quarters? Three, uh, half inch. Half inch conduit strain relief. Sometimes called a cable relief. Mail Edison. Any style, we like the screws on the bottom. Edison refers to the type of pins at the top. Standard household looking plug situation. Ceramic base, they look like this. That's one style. It's easier if the screws are on top, but if the screws are on the bottom, that's fine too. Smaller is easier sometimes, but that's probably what you'll find. Get this lamp. Par 38 flood, it says flood right there. 120 watts. So there's 120 watts right there. Those are your two important things. 120 watt flood. Par 38 lamp. There you go. This piece of metal. Flat punched zinc plate metal. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is for the yoke. It looks like that. You'll need probably that size or bigger. Longer, I should say. Okay, now you want some spade crimps. Now these are the things that we buy for you. So you've now bought everything. Here's the part where we'll provide for you. This is how you recognize them when you get here. This spade the crimps. Spade crimps. They're yellow. They're 1210, they're called. These are your machine screws. 8 by 32. Number 8 refers to the diameter. 32 refers to the thread count. There, now that's more information than you wanted to know. <laughs> These are the nuts and the washers the that go with. Yeah. <laughs> what else? They should all, this is a pair here, they all fit together. Uh, now it's your turn. They're a trifecta, not a pair. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Next trifecta. These are the 5 16th size hardware that you're going to need to attach your yoke. Note that they are much larger than the other trifecta. And they have these little wing nuts that have little wings, unlike the other nut. There you go. You want to compare Bolts. them? Sure. We've got the small and the big. Two sets. Okay. Uh, this is stuff that your handy shop assistant will help you with. Um, he's going to use these drill bits to put the holes that you need for your yoke to connect your lamp base, and then this guy to punch the hole for your conduit strain relief. What size are they? Uh, 5 sixteenths and 3 sixteenths. So 5 sixteenths is for the yoke? Yes. And 3 sixteenths is for the lamp base? Correct. And this hole saw? And the hole saw is 
uh, seven eighths. Seven eighths, and that was used for the conduit strain relief for hole. For the conduit strain relief hole. And then uh, over there is the abrasive saw that your handy shop foreman is going to show you how to use to cut your yoke zinc plated thingy into the size that you need. And then we're going to bend it for you into the yoke shape or show you how to do that using the um, using the uh, table clamp situation, <laughs> which is happening over there under that pile of <laughs> styrofoam. styrofoam, which will always be there. So that's how you'll know <laughs> where the table clamp is there. It's hiding over there. All right. Those are your materials. Let's get started. Good work. Good luck. <laughs> it's not good work yet, Ann. Good luck. You're being optimistic. Break leg. <laughs> Can you please help me make a hole right here? Yes, ma'am. Seven eighths hole saw. Screw gun. Okay, this is where it gets tricky. You need to assemble very carefully a coffee can jig to hold your coffee can still while you put a hole in it with your magic hole making device. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna construct one real quick. Okay, after your thing is, keep, keep, keep pointed down there. Oh. After you've constructed your magical coffee can holding device, you're ready to put a hole in it. Couldn't have been smoother. Ta-da! This other one was not an error. This was a, uh, a ventilation hole mm, that we very mm -hmm. carefully made with the wrong size hole saw earlier today. You can feel free to skip that step. That's an advanced step. All right, we're good. Um, you should struggle a little bit, as witnessed here. A little struggling is, is a natural part of the process. Please do not cut yourself while struggling. This is what that should look like. <laughs> Carefully, Stop. painstakingly, no, now I'm cut a circle really, really in the lid of your thing. Have you have you injured yourself yet? Please be careful yet. with that. That's the business end. Once you've gotten your little cable retainer clip attached, take your business to a well ventilated area and spray paint her black using. High heat specialty black barbecue spray paint. Is the high heat element important? Yes, you have to get high heat. Oh, why is that? Because it'll burn if you don't. Oh, is that bad? So, the light turning on is important, but being on fire is bad. Bad. Even if the fire would provide more light. Bad. Hmm, Counterintuitive. Good to know. Thank you. If you're making a coffee can light and not having fun, you are missing the point. Okay, so what are we doing here? Cutting off the black part, step one. Are we being, care are we being careful? No. Yeah, yeah, we're trying. Oh, jeez. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. Separate the wires. Separate the shiny wires and then do this. Like this. He's a cable stripper. Woo! So that ought to come right off. Oops. Never fear. You don't know what you're doing. It's okay. Just pull the trigger. Yeah. Who cares if you don't exactly know what the tool does or what it's going to do? I did it! How many college students does it take to build a coffee can? The answer? Several. A horror story. Jennifer, tell us what happened to you at the hardware store. It was too good to be true. So, <laughs> I walked into the store, and there's this random guy standing there, right? And he's like, what are you wiring up? And I was like, oh, it's a lamp for class. And he's like, oh, let me see your list. So he grabs my list and gets everything on it. I come here. This is the wrong cable. Mm -hmm. It only has two, so mm -hmm. it's three. Oh, no! They shouldn't even sell and, those. They're dangerous. And it, I got the wrong this. Not only did you get the wrong uh, base, but it was incredibly fragile. Yes, I dropped it and it broke. And you only, how many times did you have to drop it? Once. Just once! 
Let the tears of this young lady serve as a lesson to all future classes. Don't listen to other people. Here is a slightly unnecessary amount of personal protection for assembling your coffee can. No, safety first. Yes, correct. Correct. <laughs> what is what is this? A crimp. No. It's a this. Supplied for Spade you. terminal. There you go. Spade terminal. Use the very end of it. Yep. Oh, really? It yep. says wire cutter. That sounds frightening. But it won't cut it. Like this? Yep. Just keep going. Oh, gosh. Do you have to be strong for this? Really? Did I do it right? Cram it on there. You got it. I got it. There you go. Ow. Make the noise as it helps. <laughs> the Lamaze of cable crimping. <laughs> Ta -da. Only one end. So now selecting a screwdriver I'll is an this one. Oh, all right. So do I just screw it down now? Correct. Oh. Okay. Gold and black. Hey, that's like our school colors. That's so classy. I'm gonna have to edit that out. We don't want anyone to know what school this is. So you're gonna attach your black to your gold, your white your silver and your green you're gonna leave loose on a machine screw right now attached with a nut what are we doing Angela today we are um, marking the screw holes where the base will attach to the can but on the other side in the inside this has to go in here good and I see that you have a ventilation hole here hey <laughs> that's, that's good. your fault <laughs> <laughs> just center it as best as you can Okay. There. Beautiful. One. Two. There you go. Here's my little green. Little green. Little green. Can okay. Go. How about so mark here? a hole for little green. Little green, right Beautiful. there. Beautiful. There you go. Good push harder. There you go. One for a little green, yeah, you want it pretty close to the edge so that it's not in the way of a bunch of other stuff. Okay. Good, nice and easy. There you go. Ta -da. So, the bottom of your can should at this point look a little something like this. You've taken the two machine screws that came with the lamp base and put them through the bottom through your piece of cardboard and you put on a washer and a nut tighten them down as tight as they'll go and we've got our ground wire attached to the other machine bolt like this all right so we're ready to go into the lamp now what you want to do first and foremost is you want to get your green guy in there and out the hole that the green guy is supposed to go in Okay, so we've got we've got the grounding machine bolt attached to the green wire inside, putting on a washer and a nut. Don't tighten it down too much, just get the nut on there as a placeholder so it doesn't slide back out. Oh, there it is. And magic. Now, it's not entirely your fault that that was really hard because you just drilled your holes in the wrong spot. <laughs> so it's your fault well, that's from my the fault. past. So tighten all these down and then that part of your project is done. Get some of this and make sure that your hole is big enough to accommodate the bolts that you're going to use later. The sparks will not hurt you if they hit you. They sting a little, but they won't burn you. The end will be a little warm and a little sharp, so we'll go grind that off. Bending the yoke, we're wearing proper hearing protection. 
because we are using a ball pin hammer, which has the rounded part on the back, against metal, which is going to be loud. So Katira has already marked in six inches from the end. She's using the inside mark on both ends. So wherever we want the bend, we're going to put that line. That's the right place, right? Right there. And then you just hit it. <laughs> and that's it. You just do the other side. Perfect. So you want to make sure that it's able to turn completely over the front and the back side of it. Delightful. 180 degrees. Bolt. Washer. Uh, you all yoked up, son.